what's good? What's going on? Which is your girl Simba. And it's reaction time, okay? We are back. Me and the Switch Babies are back with another reaction. We finna watch some more conspiracy stuff. Yes, yes, we are. We finna check it out. This is the second episode. Let's get into it. W intro, you know what I mean? But look, it's is SpongeBob conspiracy number two. The the first one had me freaking my mind was blown. It was the uh Squilliam conspiracy, him against his hate for uh Squidward. Okay. So we finished to check out the second uh conspiracy. Shout out Alex Bale. This is the te te <laughs> This is the television theory. It's about 18 minutes. We finished to get into it. Before we do that, make sure you guys are hitting the like button subscribing to the channel turning on your post notifications you know what i'm saying so you don't miss any videos subscribe so we can reach 100k by the summer and also come over to the twitch this is where we be at this is where we do the whole you know what i'm saying let's go this is where we do everything we got the vibes over here we got the twitch chat come over to the dark side come vibe with us but let's check out this video man big simple let's check it out let's check it out let's check it out the show SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group of puppet masters who are always watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. This is okay. a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show SpongeBob SquarePants, and I believe it's all actually intended by the creators. And I'm gonna prove it. This is the television theory. Huh, okay. Hold on. What's the theory? You guys had a great reaction to my Squilliam Fancies in Theory, and I had a lot of fun making it. Squilliam, you lying, deceiving bastard! I didn't even realize that! But trust me when I say that what I've discovered this time is much, much bigger. To start this theory, we have to go back to the very beginning of the very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here, we see Bikini Bottom, teeming with life. Home of one of my favorite creatures, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple, you silly. So let me ask you a question. Who's speaking in this clip? Well, obviously that's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times throughout the show. Facts. Ah, goo lagoon. lagoon. A stinky mud puddle for you and me. Puddle. Ah, Why is he French? The crusty crab. I never realized Through he was French until just now. Past all the many kinds of undersea life. Pops boating school, where diligent students learn the rules of the road. But you're what's exactly good, Majin? The narrator. Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not uh -huh. supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Caillou was amazed that mommy had made a rainbow, just like in the- Hey, Majin. Majin, Majin. I feel like when you make a meme video, try to do a, do a try not to laugh challenge. Let's see if you got that in a bag, bro. Make that next meme a try not to laugh challenge, bro. And get the, get the funniest of them funnies, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But let him try not to laugh challenges, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? A picture. But there's something different about this narrator. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. Facts. The ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water. But below, a complex world full of color, life, and wonder. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Caillou. He Damn, T. Caillou a bitch. What the hell he do to you? Damn, <laughs> damn, T, what the hell? That shit came out of, you a bitch, spoiled bitch. <laughs> Yo, okay, you all right? You want to talk about it? Shit. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life. What if I told you that he's not just some random disembodied voice? He's an actual character in this universe. Here we are again at the huh? Bikini Bottom boating school. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's boating school exam. But more importantly, this is the last test for the year. And if SpongeBob does not pass this one, it means another whole year of boating school! Aww. 
SpongeBob literally crashes into the fourth wall, and we actually get to see the narrator and the camera he's been oh, filming. Oh yeah, with. I the remember show, this SpongeBob episode. SquarePants is not just a cartoon. Everything we see is a part. It's of so. Is it like a reality TV show? It's probably like a reality. Okay. Of a nature documentary television show being filmed by scuba divers. And if you're still not convinced, I searched really, really hard and found an old SpongeBob DVD bonus feature that basically confirms everything. Since before time even existed, landloving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name of this miraculous place? Bikini Bottom. Poring over the mass Wait. of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these six creatures, I went to college! They rolled their cameras and took notes. Holy shit. Holy shit, that might actually... Holy shit. It makes sense! Yo, this- And now, finally, we can learn all of the things that these smarty pantses have to teach us. Life lessons from Bikini Bottom. I don't know how it can get any more clear than that. Now, if you rewatch the show with this new information in mind, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird, unexplained running gag of a human hand interfering with the characters. It's even in the beginning of every episode in the intro for the show. Maybe Yo. the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating SpongeBob for the suds. Well, Mr. Squarepants. Yo! But this actually makes sense, though. Okay. Now nah, this actually makes sense, though. This is actually crazy. Seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? For your treatment. Oh, and they treat him like an actual sponge. It makes sense that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of their main character. After all, there's no show without Spongebob, but that's not okay. the only reason why they interfere. Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd, confusing endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming out of a Patrick costume and attacking the characters. A real gorilla? Then as soon as Spongebob begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Oh, uh, well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the, George, they're onto us! <laughs> Let's get out of here. I remember, yo, wait, 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 wait. This was a W episode. That, that, that gorilla was literally terrorizing the whole town, bro. It was terrorizing the whole town. Yo, these really make you sit back and like think like, yo, am I bugging? SpongeBob is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being just a little too weird. But knowing what we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. Every other land animal we've seen underwater wears a helmet and is drawn in a cartoony style. Facts. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. So Facts. I believe both the gorilla and the horse he rides away on are, are humans, humans wearing costumes. The okay. filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. It's starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary anymore. It's more of a reality he TV show Yo! for entertainment. Who knows what other absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining and profitable. Although, based on the people's reaction, it doesn't always seem to pay off. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Ah, uh, Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. 
SpongeBob is watching his favorite You never watched Saturday SpongeBob? You wasn't show, allowed to? The what? Adventures of Mermaid Man and, and Barnacle, Barnacle Boy. Boy. Enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy bland cereal. And wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. I mean, listen to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy bland cereal. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new mo cocoa drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua. No artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show is actually from the surface world. They are human after all. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're gonna sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Hang on a second, why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size as all the fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish? Uh, wh whatever, I'll, I'll come back to that one later. Huh? The show doesn't even just hide product placements. In the episode Model Sponge, they literally trick SpongeBob into making a commercial for a human product. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Very well. Lose the pants! Pants! There's my star! What the hell? What's happening? What's happening? In this scene, you'll be cleaning Wait. the bathroom. Fixtures. Okay, let's say where's my cleaning utensil. Don't you get it? You are the cleaning utensil. High speed! Oh no, your bathroom is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new sponge. <laughs> Household chores are a snap with new sponge. It cleans sinks. <laughs> just look at that shine. This is just like in real life how SpongeBob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. Wait. So far I've shown you I remember that episode SpongeBob too. SpongeBob SquarePants is actually a documentary television show, but the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But that brings us to an important question. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go back to that clip where Spongebob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of boarding school! Huh. What happened? Oh, nothing, Spongebob. You just struck another pedestrian. Mrs. Puff calls him a pedestrian, Hold which on. sounds more like she thinks he's just some random Bikini Bottom citizen. The different types of marine life in Spongebob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to believe that the characters just think these filmmakers are another weird How type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, the gorilla and the horse immediately know. get nervous and run away when Spongebob questions what's going on. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the, George, they're onto us! Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Now, there isn't a ton of footage of the characters interacting with the filmmakers, but I dug really, really deep and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. Okay. This is an old commercial from 2004 made to promote the Spongebob movie. <laughs> Spongebob. What kind of jellyfish is that? It's not a jellyfish, Patrick. It's a spaceship. Ooh. Hey guys, it's Carlos from hell? Arizona. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? What the want hell? To learn about our world, and it's chosen us. What? Yay! Oh. We've been chosen. A submarine comes down to SpongeBob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. SpongeBob and Patrick Ayo? are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. We'll see you in the movie. Bye. Movie? What's that? I don't know. La, 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 la. So I think it's pretty clear at this point hmm. that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed and I've never seen with. that commercial. But there are some characters that have to have some level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat SpongeBob, and the director fish that Facts. directed the commercial for the human world. Okay. What makes these characters so special? 
First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before we directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob. Out of all the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Almost like the filmmakers didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom so they wouldn't risk everyone finding out about the television show. Then there's the Dr. Fish. We don't know where he originally came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes he's purple with orange hands, sometimes he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Dr. Mandalore huh. from the Jellyfish Convention. And now it only hurts when you touch it. <laughs> touch. Why does he have so many different disguises and identities? What is he hiding? I believe hidden throughout Bikini Bottom are spies like this who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main characters and make sure Why he tongue goes dipping the There's so many Wait, suspicious go back, characters bro. in Bikini Bottom that it can Why was that nigga tongue dip Look at how he's tonguing his sandwich, my G. and make sure Look at how he's tugging like his this, sandwich. Who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main Why is he tugging and his sure sandwich like that? Plan. There's so many suspicious characters in Bikini Bottom that it could literally be anyone. The mailman, the hot dog vendor, old man Jenkins, it could literally be anyone. But what if I told you that the biggest spy of all isn't some random side character, it's one of the main characters of the show. Is it someone Gary? Someone has been there from the very beginning. Someone who's not even is from Bikini Gary? Bottom. Someone who's not even from the ocean. That's right. Sandy? Sandy Cheeks. What? Sandy How? Cheeks is the thrill-seeking scientific squirrel from Texas who lives underwater in her tree dome. But why did she come to Bikini Bottom? In the episode Chimps Ahoy, we find out she was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions. But why does she need to be underwater to make inventions? She could have just as easily have made any of her inventions on land. It must be extremely expensive to maintain a giant dome of air underwater. There Facts. is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this Wait. whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day. And many of the wacky, entertaining episode plots are driven by an invention Sandy creates. Everything she does is a calculated move to carry out the hidden agenda of the filmmakers. Her entire friendship with Spongebob and the other characters is built on a lie. But you're probably saying, Sandy is a sweet, friendly squirrel. There's no way she's behind this. But You're not convinced yet? That's okay. Because what I'm about to show you is so mind-blowing, so insanely revealing, that it's actually the whole reason I decided Wait. to make this video. Get ready for the big one. Season 10, Episode 10, Feral Friends is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery. During a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less evolved, real-life versions of themselves. Sandy is completely caught off guard by this and decides to call someone for help. What and the take hell? a guess who she calls. Yo! Hello, French narrator speaking. Hey, Frenchie! It's me, Sandy! Ah, uh, Sandy Cheeks. How I never saw this you? episode! Oh, it's not hanging too good, Frenchie. You see, there's this- Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Wait. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Holy Wait. shit! Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going what? on and ask for instructions on what to do next. She's been working what? with him the entire fucking time. He even has a picture of her on his desk. Yo! This is where I originally planned on ending the video, but there is still one small issue with the television theory. Just one nagging plot hole that contradicts everything. If this is all a television show filmed by scuba divers, then how are we seeing inside the buildings? It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying thing that keeps this theory from being complete. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras inside of everyone's homes, but we never really see anything like that. Holy shit. Wait. Season 6, Episode 24, Truth or Square. The Spongebob 10th anniversary special where they reveal lots of stuff about the characters. But the most damning piece of evidence comes from when the characters get lost in the Krusty Krab vents and end up in a room full of monitors showing live footage of all of their homes. Oh! My house is on TV! All of our houses are on TV! Wait, bro. Gary the snail, you get down from that bed this instant. Oh, I do remember this video. Look, 
It's Sandy! And who is the character responsible for all of these hidden cameras? Mr. Krabs, why do you have cameras watching us? <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, I just want to make sure you all floss after every meal. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Is Dental he working hygiene? with them too? Eugene, you lying bastard. Of course he would sell out his friends for a quick buck. Facts! And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what happens next. Hey, who are those guys? I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? Alright, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. <laughs> a cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the characters this entire time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. The case is closed. Yo, 4K! The television theory is something the show has consistently alluded to from the very first episode to the newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it and our characters will discover the real truth about their world. But regardless, that's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. 4K. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't ya? Alright, here's a quick bonus theory. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were two superheroes that fought crime underwater and protected the sea from evil. Whether or not they actually did this or it was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. But you can't retire! There's evil afoot! What? <laughs> evil! So, they decided to live the rest of their lives in Bikini Bottom. And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using Mermaid Man's shrinking belt. Nigga. No shot. Bro. That makes sense! The case is closed. Again. Damn. We gotta watch this. We gonna watch this one in probably like a couple days. But sheesh! That, yo, that last one really like put the icing on the cake, bro. That really shit really made sense, bro. God damn. That's a W. That's a W, man. What y'all think, Chad W. Vid? I think I'm taking a break from social media. I can't do it no more. I can't. I can't. WV, WV. All right, yo. So y'all make sure y'all say bye to you too. We gonna we gonna chat it with them. Listen, that was a W freaking theory. I ain't even gonna hold you. That was a W theory, okay? Um, but me and Twitch babies, we up out of here, man. Make sure you guys are smashing the like button, okay? Subscribing to the channel. We need 100k by the summer and also turn it on the post notifications so you don't miss any of the videos. And come over to the dark side where we act we're live, you know what I'm saying? We watch these videos and stuff like that. Buy YT like and subscribe to become a Twitch baby and get a gifted sub from me. Big Boss says it every time, you know what I'm saying? If you want a big if you want a gifted sub from Big Boss, you know where to be at, you know what I'm saying? Simple. But we up out of here, man. Like I said, hit the like button, subscribe, comment what you think about it, and uh, comment down below. Let me know you want me to react to the third one. But me and the Twitch babies, we out. I have y'all selves a good one, man. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time is where y'all need to be. Peace.